Right now, today, showers, tomorrow, snow. You're waking up to fog and temperatures in the 50s, but neither will last. Chris is tracking the roller coaster week ahead. And with just three days to go, we're getting you Rose Bowl ready, checking in with our sports team straight from Pasadena. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. It is 630 on December 29th. I'm Christina Laurie with meteorologist Chris Reese. And we're, we have our red on. Yes. We are Rose Bowl ready. Badger ready. I'm subtly also supporting my Illini who are in the <laughs> red box bowl. So fair enough. by default. And I'm celebrating my uh, <laughs> WKU Hilltoppers because our colors are red and white. Okay, there are they go. in a bowl? No, okay. but <laughs> I was like, might as well. Whatever, might I'll as well jump on, them on. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, good news in terms of weather somewhat this morning. We have some drier air that's moving into the picture, and that means that we're going to see a lull in the heavy rain that we saw overnight. Here's high resolution Doppler right now. A lot of that is now moving off towards the north and east. In fact, watch Doppler track as we've gone through really about the past 12 hours. You see that rain move in overnight. Now it starts to move off towards the north and east, but that does still mean we have some rain and snow to come later on tonight into tomorrow. Temperatures this morning are very mild to start. Janesville already at 55. We're at 51 in Madison right now. Boscobel at 56 and we're going to continue to watch those temperatures spike as we look ahead. Temperatures are going to stay into the mid 50s all day. We're going to keep the clouds and the drizzle around all day as well. We'll see that high around 56 and then as we move into tonight, things begin to change. Check out the winter weather alert. We have winter weather advisories for the western parts of our viewing area. And then northern Wisconsin has winter storm war watches, rather, not warnings just yet. And I do believe we might even see some added winter weather bulletins by the time we get you towards this afternoon. That is what's to come. That means we're going to see continued impacts to travel to break down in a few minutes. I had already forgot that yesterday you were talking about temperatures in the 50s for today, and I grabbed my really heavy winter <laughs> coat. I had multiple layers going, and you really don't need it this morning. You do not need it this morning. Yesterday you did. I tried to do some yeah. uh, plane spotting in Milwaukee, and it was windy oh. and raw. I'll tell you that. But uh, today will be good. Tomorrow you'll need the layers again. Okay, I want to hear more about your plane spotting. We'll, we'll do talk. that <laughs> in a few minutes. Thank you so much, Chris. Well, we begin with an update to the breaking news we first shared with you Saturday morning. We've now learned two people from our own community are among the dead after a Hawaiian helicopter crash. The Kauai Police Department says 47-year-old Amy Gannon and her 13-year-old daughter Jocelyn Gannon were killed Thursday during a safari helicopter tour. Rescue workers found the wreckage Friday afternoon. The helicopter's pilot, as well as four passengers from Switzerland, were also killed. Investigators are still looking into what caused that crash. Meanwhile, a spokesperson for the Madison Metropolitan School District says Jocelyn was an eighth grade student at Hamilton Middle School. A letter to family said in part as individuals, we all have our own ways of coping with bereavement and for many of our students, this could likely be their first experience with this type of loss. Please talk with your child about Jocelyn's passing and seek appropriate help if needed. Emotional support will be made available to students and staff in the school library starting tomorrow. This morning, we're learning more about the Madison mother and daughter lost in that crash. Amy Gannon was the co-founder of a local nonprofit organization. Adam Duxter spoke to that group's co-founder and Gannon's business partner, who describe her as someone who made it her mission to help uplift and empower others. I didn't even think that could be someone I know. I just never even thought something like this could happen. For Heather Wentler, the news is still hard to believe. It still doesn't feel real to me. It still feels very surreal in that I'm either going to wake up or Amy's going to call me. And that she's lost her business partner and friend, Amy Gannon. In 2012, the two met at a startup weekend, and they quickly noticed in a crowd of more than 100, there were only a handful of women. That's when Heather says they got to thinking. Amy uh, is always all about the big ideas. And when she sees a problem, it's always how can we how can we fix or eliminate this problem? In the years since, their group Doyen has worked to empower hundreds of female entrepreneurs in the Madison area. When she talked to you, when she worked with you, she made you feel like you were the only person that existed at that time. She says it was that ability that truly made Amy who she was. It was magical. It really. Any second. Oh, 
When Amy was in front of a room was when she really came to life. And she just brought this energy with her that no one will be, ever be able to replace. Amy Gannon is survived by her husband and 16-year-old son. Heather says out of everything Amy accomplished in her career, she always considered being a mom. Her number one accomplishment and with someone like Amy, who has given so much to so many, Heather says she's already had a number of people approach her about wanting to help their family. She says they're trying to work out the best way to do that right now. And once we know, we'll be sure to pass that along to you. Gannon was also a longtime faculty member of Edgewood College and a former interim dean. Representatives with the college said in a statement Saturday, Amy was such an energetic and positive presence on our campus for many years. Our prayers today are with her family and everyone who loved her. More local news now. The medical examiner has released the names of the people killed in a Christmas night crash near Janesville. 19-year-old Emmanuel Jones and 20-year-old Quentin A. Castillo were killed late Wednesday night in a crash on West Rockport Road in the town of Janesville. Police believe they swerved to avoid hitting another car and hit a tree. They were headed back to work after a break. The crash is still under investigation. Madison police are investigating after two buildings were hit with gunfire this weekend. Officers say they responded to a report of shots fired around 3.30 Saturday afternoon at the Seven Oaks apartment building on the 1100 block of Moreland Road. People in two vehicles were shooting at each other in a driveway. Two nearby buildings were also hit by gunfire, but police say no one was injured. Madison police say at least three people are in custody after robbing a liquor store. Officers say they allegedly robbed Rocky's Liquor just before 2 o'clock Saturday afternoon on the West Beltline Highway. Witnesses told police the suspects were armed and drove away. Officers later found the vehicle they left in a near post nearby post road. The robbers ran away, but police were able to detain three of them. And on the east side of town, witnesses told police a man dressed in all black went up to the passenger side of a car in the East Town Mall parking lot and fired at least one bullet into the window. This happened Saturday afternoon. The suspect then got into a black vehicle and drove off. The victim also drove away. No one was injured. Police are interviewing the driver who was shot at. Taking a turn now. We head to Pasadena, where the Wisconsin Badgers are looking to have some duck for dinner on Wednesday when they take on Oregon in the Rose Bowl. But before that, they'll have some beef. Let us explain. The annual Lowry's Beef Bowl pitting the Wisconsin offensive line against Oregon to see who can eat the most beef happened overnight. Offensive lineman David Mormon got to spin the first salad. He was injured against Minnesota and in the Big Ten title game, so he's having a double dose of fun this week. Actually, I grew up going to Chicago with my family on vacation. I would go to the Lawry's in Chicago. And so this is like one of my favorite restaurants in the world. So being able to go kind of do something like that, it's been, a, it's been really cool. It's a really cool experience. Man, I'm pumped. It's a, it was definitely a hard couple weeks. You know, you want to be out there playing with the guys. But, um, you know, I'm feeling great, and I'm excited to get out there. And uh, one last game was a Badger. So I'm so honored and blessed to do it here and get like the Rose Bowl. And I just can't wait to go out there and play with the guys one last time. Linebacker Chris Orr got to make the first cut of prime rib. He's a Texas guy who says he prefers ribeye, but this is good, and he's keeping the chef's coat and hat, too. Let's hear I'm going to wear this in my kitchen every time I cook, um, and if I make something for anybody, uh, make something for my parents, my brothers, or my fiance, if they say anything, I'll just ask them where their outfit is, and then how to handle the debate. I'm official now. And we will have team coverage ahead of the Rose Bowl all week long. Let's pull up the graphic. Our Kevin Lewis, Melissa Kim, and Eric Franke will be covering the team and talking to the fans ahead of the big matchup between the Oregon Ducks and Wisconsin Badgers. That's happening, of course, on New Year's Day. But today, the Packers are hoping to make history in Detroit. The last and only Packer to get 20 total touchdowns in a season was running back Amon Green back in 2003. Right now, current Packers running back Aaron Jones leads the NFL with 19 total this season. 16 rushing, 3 receiving. He's also 16 away from 1,000 rushing yards. He'd be the first to hit that mark since Eddie Lacy back in 2014. Although Jones... The Packers' fifth-round fifth pick in 2017 evaded reporters during this week's media session. His teammates want him to hit both milestones during the regular season finale today. He's earned it. He's, you know, he's ran really hard all year and been a big part of our success. 20 touchdowns would be fantastic. Um, 
I don't know the last time. Tom probably does when, it, when a back had 20, but that's a pretty big number for running back. He's always been a confident guy. I don't know if he's ever told you guys about when he first got here. I called out and said that he was going to be the player that he is today. So I'd like to take a little bit of credit for that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a great player. He's obviously contributed a lot to this team's uh, success as far as putting points on the board. Another thing to watch for today is the number of turnovers. The Packers gave three to the Vikings last Monday, but head coach Matt LaFleur says they're treating this afternoon's game at Detroit like a playoff game, and they can't afford any more sloppy plays if they want to earn and win a bye in the first round. Once you put that on tape and you see their intent from a defensive unit, that's something that they're going to be talking about all week, and that's going to be an added emphasis. They're always you know, punching at the ball. They shoot, they got a couple out on us when we played them last time. Uh, it was a one point game that went down to the, right to the end. And so we're gonna have our work cut out for us. Kickoff is at noon. The time now 641 after a quick warm up into the 50s. Today temperatures are about to free fall. Chris is tracking our last snow chances of 2019 and the first of 2020 in his first alert forecast. That's right after this. Fog drizzle and low clouds are what we're going to be contending with as we go through today. But then the heavy rain does make a comeback as we head into the overnight hours. And that leads us into the light snow that we're going to be expecting moving into Monday. So folks who are still traveling throughout southern Wisconsin and really the upper Midwest as a whole, be prepared for the low visibility at times, especially as we head through today and into tonight, simply because that fog is going to be a thing. Light snow at slick spots come back into the picture as we head into tomorrow and then by Tuesday 
Tuesday, we're going to dealing with we're going to be dealing with those flurries earlier on, so that could lead to even more slick spots. Watch the travel delays. Today is going to be good just because we're in what we call a dry slot. I'll explain what that is in just a moment, but we'll start to see more of those minor to moderate travel delays today and into Tuesday before things finally begin to wind down for us. So a dry slot. Here's our area of low pressure that we do have just towards our north. You have multiple different conveyors per se that are associated with an area of low pressure. You have your warm air coming out of the south, your cold air coming out of the north, but then from the south and west, drier air gets wrapped up into the system. That is where we find ourselves today. This is why there's a break in the activity. What we're going to be paying attention to is perhaps a secondary low that will develop around St. Louis and work its way towards Chicago and Western Michigan as we head into tonight. Then the wraparound snows that you see over the high plains that will work in tonight as we head into tomorrow. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on this right here as well as we go through time. In the meantime, the radar may not appear all that active, but there's still a lot of cloud cover, fog and low drizzle. That's going to hang around for us pretty much all day long, and it doesn't matter where you are. We're all going to be dealing with that. Temperature wise, we're into the low 50s, 51 right now. Notice these strong winds coming out of the south. That's going to keep those warmer temperatures around as we go through today. In fact, we'll likely top out around 54 to 56. Then temperatures begin to drop as we head into tonight. By midnight, 30s in the west. 40s here. Here comes that rain coming in off of Lake Michigan and then watch how that begins to wrap around with more snows as we head into your Tuesday. That could be some accumulating snow as well. We're talking perhaps an inch or two. Colder air sticks around as we go into the end of this decade and into the start of a new one. And we're going to watch multiple shots of colder air that will likely lead us into a pattern that's going to be a bit more stormier for us in terms of those snow chances. In the meantime, light snow chances do exist tomorrow. More light snow chances arrive for the end of this week and the weekend. And then those temperatures really get cold. We're talking lows in the low teens and highs in the low 20s. Closer to average by the time we get you towards the end of this 10 day forecast. Still, at least New Year's Eve looking clear. New Year's Eve itself does look like a quiet day. Yes, that's good for everyone staying out <laughs> I late. Know. I don't know that will be included in the folks staying out late. I will be out we'll late, but in a different state, so it's OK. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, that's good. You, uh, no. I for, always forgot you got a week off. Enjoy uh, it. A week off. I will. Thank you so much, Chris. Well, if you have outdoor plans this weekend, this is your reminder to download our channel 3000 weather and traffic app. You'll be the first to know when weather that will affect your day is headed our way with the most up to date and accurate weather conditions. You can find it for free in your app store. Time now 647 bringing food from the big screen and TV right to your table. We'll get a behind the scenes look at a unique YouTube series called Binging with Babish. That's next on News 3 Now this morning Sunday.
Welcome back. If you've ever wondered what the dishes you see in shows and films really taste like, you're in luck. YouTube sensation Andrew Ray is bringing food from the big screen and TV right to your table in his YouTube series Binging with Babish. Jamie Wack shares his story. I named the show completely arbitrarily after an obscure character from the West Wing, and now it's my entire brand and identity. YouTube series Binging with Babish offers recipes rich in pop culture. Add about a half a cup of rum, get your torch ready, and engage slow motion. He shows viewers how to replicate their favorite on-screen meals in their homes. I humbly place before you my East Meets West patented Traeger turkey burger. Parks and Rec came on, and Ron and Chris were having a burger cook-off. Here's mine. It's a hamburger made out of meat on a bun with nothing. And I was like, what would that burger actually taste like in real life? And I was like, oh, I could try it right here. And with that, Binging with Babish was born. At 20 ingredients and three hours later, I do not know how Ron's Burger could possibly stand up to, oh, it's way better. I mean, it's not even a competition, it's just better. I only intended to make the one. People liked it, I made another one. People like that made another one, and here we are now. He has recreated some of the most iconic meals in film and television, down to every detail. Vinny was in charge of the tomato sauce. Shaving garlic with a razor blade for Goodfellas prison sauce. Everybody is going to get to know each other in the pot. I'm serious about this stuff. Serving Kevin's chili from the office on a piece of carpet. Tell me that is not the most delicious thing you've ever seen. This is ham soaked in rum. And even making the downright disgusting rum ham from it's always sunny in Philadelphia. We're gonna take a bite of it immediately, spit out because it's really, really disgusting. Ray now has two spin-off series and two cookbooks. A very common thread amongst YouTubers is like, I had no idea that it would <laughs> it would take off like this. I really didn't. I was deeply depressed and in a, I was not happy in my marriage and I needed a creative outlet. I, I just wasn't happy in general. A creative outlet born of family memories. My mother taught me to cook when I was very young. She passed away when I was 11 and she taught me how to make cookies. She would just go outside and get scoops of snow and pour maple syrup over it and give it to us. And I just, I have a lot of very specific food memories of my childhood. And it's one way that she gets to live on in what I do. And it's one way that I get to feel a little closer to her. She's not his only influence. It struck me, your mother Annie loved to cook. Mm -hmm. Your father Douglas is a professor. Yes. And now you are teaching cooking. Yes. Do you think that that's, uh, am I being too analytical of you? You're honestly making me realize things I never thought of before. <laughs> I'm just like, wow, I really am my parents' kid. Yeah. <laughs> it's like therapy, we don't need the cameras. We're gonna throw some salt into the pot here. When it comes to YouTube stardom, Ray strives to separate himself from the pack. There's definitely an element of narcissism in establishing yourself as an online personality. You do need to be self-absorbed in some ways. And uh, that was something that I was trying to combat with not showing my face. I wanted to make a show that was purely about the food. We joined him behind the scenes to recreate sliders from Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. I want 30 sliders, five French fries, and four large cherry Cokes. I want the same, except make mine diet Cokes. So for uh, scientific comparison, because you know accuracy is paramount to the show, I have some of these frozen sliders here. So. We have a nice square little patty. Yeah, uh, very thin. Yeah, very very thin. That's why I, I want to weigh it, because I want to see exactly what kind of target we're trying to hit. The whole idea with these burgers when you cook them is that they steam on a bed of onions. Really? Yeah. White Castle burgers never hit the grill. I got to say, I love how well thought all of this stuff is. <laughs> it's important to you to get this right. Yeah, I mean, we want to make something that resembles the foods from their favorite fictions. And then one of the uh, hallmarks of um, White Castle burgers, so that they got five holes punched in them. Here but this go. is literally the first time you have tried this process. Yes. And you're shooting and you're gonna use this, and we are too. Absolutely. And you're good with that. Oh yeah. I love that. Because if I right. screw it up, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the, you know where I went wrong so people don't do the same thing at home. If they're crazy enough to try and do this. I got my buddy Jamie Wax here helping me out, and we made just enough burgers for the two of us. An hour later, we made it official with a taste Let's test. Let's see how we did here. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mmm, that's really good. A solid burger. And it's reminiscent of White Castle. It has the same kind of flavor profile, a bit. Can I have a few for 3 a.m. so I can be sure that they, uh, <laughs> they match White Castle? Yeah, Nearly six million people tune in to Ray's channel. 
and he asks just one thing of them. You don't like people to call you chef. I, I didn't earn that title. There are people out there who really went through the ringer and went to culinary school and cut their teeth under chefs that yelled and threw things at them. And I didn't, I'm a home cook that knows how to film and edit things well. Uh, my constant feeling with the success of the show is I am going to continue to try and earn what you've given me. All right, now I'm hungry, and that's good news because we have food coming up in our own show. There's still a full hour of news ahead on News 3 Now this morning. Sunday, next, we're not only running through the day's top stories, but the biggest stories of the year. We'll be right back. Right now, mark your calendar. We're talking about the day you'll want to avoid heading to local malls if you hate crowds but need to return unwanted holiday gifts. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. It is December 29th. I'm Christina Laurie. We have a lot of news to get to this morning. We'll check on Mother with Chris in just a second. But first, here are three things to know to get your day started. The Kauai Police Department says 47-year-old Amy Gannon and her 13-year-old daughter Jocelyn were killed Thursday during a safari helicopter tour. They're both from Madison. Rescue workers found the wreckage Friday afternoon. The helicopter's pilot, as well as four passengers from Switzerland, were also killed. Investigators are still looking into what caused that crash. We will hear from Amy's friends and Jocelyn's teachers ahead in our 7.30 half hour of the show. Meanwhile, the Badgers are in Pasadena, and they already have one bowl game under their belts. They can still fasten them, that is. The annual Lowry's Beef Bowl pitted the Wisconsin offensive line against Oregon overnight to see who can eat the most beef. We're told this bowl doesn't have any real winners or losers, but 
Wednesday's game certainly will. We will have team coverage ahead of the Rose Bowl all week long. Our Kevin Lewis, Melissa Kim, and Eric Franke are all in California covering the team and talking to the fans ahead of the big matchup. Catch their next live report on our news this evening. And the Packers are playing for their shot at becoming the number one seed in the NFC as they head to Detroit for their last game of the regular season. The 12 and three Packers are sitting pretty and with most their most recent win in Minnesota on Monday night, they clinched the NFC North for the first time since 2016. It's also a big game for running back Aaron Jones, who is just 16 yards away from 1000 rushing yards this season. Kickoff against the Lions is at noon. Now let's check in with Chris for a first check of our forecast. Hi, Chris. Good morning, Christina. Dry slot is the word that you're going to hear us used a lot today simply because some drier air is working in. That's pushing, pushing a lot of the showers off towards the north and east. That means we're going to stay free of the heavy rain today, but we will likely keep a lot of the low clouds, the drizzle and the fog around at times. Then we'll pay attention towards the northwestern sky as wraparound moisture starts to work its way back on it. In. in the meantime, it is the mild temperatures, folks. 52 is our temperature waking up in Madison this morning. Janesville already at 55. We're at 56 in Boscobel, and these temps will only get warmer as we go through time. In fact, as we look ahead, watch how these temperatures gradually climb a couple more degrees with each hour although I do think we'll keep those low clouds hanging around we might actually be lucky enough to see a little peak of sunshine in the early afternoon hours before things thicken right back up so look for those highs around 56 will stay damp as then temperatures will begin to fall once we get you past say about five or six o'clock they'll start to fall into the 30s speaking of the 30s that's cold enough for some snow around here, and we do have winter weather alerts in the days ahead. Winter storm watches for most of northern Wisconsin. Winter weather advisories for our western counties, and there could be more added to that as we start to talk accumulating snow. We'll break that down more in a couple minutes. Thank you, Chris. Right now, shipping companies are preparing for millions of people to return Christmas gifts, and January 2nd could be the biggest day for it. Several shipping companies have dubbed that day National Returns Day. UPS expects a record 1.9 million packages to be returned this Thursday. That's a 26% increase from last year. All weekend long, we've been looking back at the year that was. Here in America, 2019 was filled with more mass shootings, a widespread college admission scam involving Hollywood actresses, and the escape of a 13-year-old Wisconsin girl from her kidnapper. Tom Hansen looks back at the top national stories of the year. A massive college admission scandal dubbed Operation Varsity Blues ensnared dozens of wealthy parents, including Hollywood actresses Felicity Huffman and Lori Loughlin. Federal prosecutors charged them with paying mastermind Rick Singer to get their children into elite universities. For every student admitted through fraud, an honest, genuinely talented student was rejected. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos accused the publisher of the National Enquirer of trying to blackmail him with lewd photos and explicit text messages between the billionaire and a woman he was having an affair with. Around the same time, Bezos announced his separation from his wife Mackenzie. The divorce made his ex one of the richest women in the world. Wealthy financier Jeffrey Epstein was found dead in his New York City jail cell while he awaited trial on sex trafficking charges. The medical examiner ruled it a suicide. A federal court in New York convicted and sentenced Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman to life in prison. Nearly three months after she disappeared, 13-year-old Jamie Kloss turned up alive in January after escaping from the man who kidnapped her and murdered her parents. A lawyer read her statement in court. He thought that he could own me, but he was wrong. I was smarter. Former Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke was sentenced to more than six years in prison for killing Laquan McDonald in 2014. Dashcam video showed Van Dyke shooting the 17-year-old more than a dozen times as he walked away from officers. During her sentencing, former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger hugged the brother of the man she was convicted of murdering. Geiger shot her neighbor Botham Jean in his own apartment. She claimed she thought it was her apartment and that he was a burglar. Shot fired, shot fired, second floor. 2019 saw more mass shootings across the U.S., including an attack inside a municipal building in Virginia Beach that left 12 dead. In August, two mass shootings less than a day apart at a Texas Walmart and an Ohio business district left 31 dead. Off the coast of Santa Barbara, a dive boat burst into flames, killing 34 people. 
Firefighters battled dozens of wildfires across California, including a massive one in Sonoma County that destroyed more than 100 homes and buildings and forced the evacuations of hundreds of thousands. The New England Patriots beat the LA Rams to win their sixth Super Bowl title, tying the Pittsburgh Steelers for the record. The U.S. women's national soccer team won its second World Cup in a row as it continued to advocate for equal pay. World champions! The Nationals won their first ever World Series. And Washington's National Zoo said goodbye to giant panda Bebe, who went to China to join a breeding program. Tom Hansen, CBS News. And in case you're concerned, Bebe's trainer brought the panda's red ball with him to China so Bebe can continue to sleep with it tucked between his arms. How cute. Coming up around 720, we'll look back at the biggest international stories of the year. But first, more local news now. If your New Year's resolution involves saving money, here's one way you can do that. A study by Alliant Energy says customers can save $90 a year on their energy bill by shutting down or unplugging devices that aren't being used. Another way you can conserve energy is by using a smart power strip, these strips can detect when a device is in standby mode, like a cell phone that's been fully charged and automatically cut off electricity. You can get one of those strips for free. Just go to the residential tab on focusonenergy.com and select free products. Time now, 707. If you're hoping to keep your Christmas tree up for just a little bit longer, I know I am, you'll want to hear this. The latest warning from state officials on an invasive species that could be living in your family's Christmas tree. And here's a live look outside. Chris is tracking your first alert forecast. That is next.
Well, happy Sunday, folks. Things are certainly damp out here, but I'll tell you what, we are no longer seeing some of that heavier rain that we did see overnight. That is because we're getting in on a little bit of a break in the action thanks to drier air that has moved into the picture. In fact, folks, that dry slot this afternoon is going to keep things at least somewhat quiet before more heavy rain moves in this overnight, and then we'll see some light snow as we head into your Monday. Now, let's go ahead and show you the setup that we have right now and explain why this dry slot is something that's important for us. We have an area of low pressure just towards our west, a warm front now moving towards the north. We do have that cold front back towards the south and west. Every area of low pressure has three conveyor belts, per se, that are associated with it. You have your warm conveyor belt bringing the warm air that supplies the moisture and the rain. You have the cold conveyor belt, which is why we're seeing snow towards the north and west. But then and there's a dry conveyor that we have towards the south and west. This is exactly why we see the clearing in between the rain and the snow. And that, folks, is exactly where we are right now. We'll continue to be there as we move through the afternoon. But that does still mean that we'll still see clouds drizzle and fog as we go through time, especially with the warmer air that's moving into the picture. Temperatures at 715 in the morning are already at 52 in Madison. Jane Zill at 55. We're at 56 as you work your way towards Boscobel. And these temperatures will continue to get warmer. Check it out. We're warming all the way up into the upper 50s today, 56. And I cannot rule out that we see a peak or two of sunshine. By the way, this is record warmth. The record for today is 54. I think we are going to go beyond that simply because we're already knocking on the door. Tonight, we'll start to see that heavier rain moving in, and it'll likely move in from the east back towards the west in time. Then that colder air begins to wrap around. This is when we start to see the snow, especially as we go through Monday afternoon, Monday night, and into Tuesday morning. And this is likely going to be uh, perhaps some accumulating snow as well. Generally about an inch or two. We're looking at one to two inches especially throughout southern Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, we could see several inches of that snow. In fact, there are winter storm watches throughout northern Wisconsin. With this in mind, folks who are traveling today, it's the fog lights, but tomorrow and Tuesday, you are going to want to make sure that you are prepped for some snowy roads, just because I certainly believe that is going to be around. Then as we look ahead, as we enter into the new year, I believe we enter into a pattern that is going to be more conducive for some snow around here. We're paying attention to the jet stream. We'll see a strong northern jet stream that'll likely send more clipper systems our way, but then it's very possible, but twice that by the middle of the month, we see a little bit more of an active southern jet stream that sends more of the bigger snow events our way. We're keeping a very close eye on this as we go through time. In the meantime, this is the immediate forecast, folks. 50s today, more showers and then snow overnight tonight into your Monday and Tuesday. We'll keep those temperatures in the upper 30s for the end of the week before falling into the 20s by the start of next week. Chris, I know you come to the station from the west. I come from the east. Driving anywhere near the lakes, it's extraordinarily foggy this yes, morning. Yes, absolutely. And where I live out west, it's a little bit more hilly. You have more farmland. It's extremely foggy there as well. So take it very easy if you're so going it's out tough this morning. Any anywhere you live. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. My pleasure. Well, some of us still have our holiday decorations up, but if you're not wasting any time in cleaning up, Wisconsin state officials want to make sure you're getting rid of decorations the right way. DATCAP is especially worried about invasive species that might be living in evergreen trees bought during the holidays. They're asking people to look for signs of the pest called EHS. It can infest things like evergreens, wreaths, and other decor. You can check for the pest by looking underneath your tree's branches. If there are any brown spots under the needles, your tree might be infested. DATCAP wants you to burn any infested items to keep the species from spreading, but you'll want to check with the DNR for burning restrictions in your area first. Well, it's almost the start of a new year, but first we're looking back at the year that was diving into the biggest stories of 2019 around the world. And then we're traveling to Pasadena too to see how Wisconsin is getting ready for their first game of 2020. That's just ahead on News 3 Now this morning, Sunday.
Welcome back. As we wind down 2019, we're continuing to take a look at some of the top stories over the past year. Overseas, we saw U.S. troops kill the leader of ISIS, a fire tear through Notre Dame, and a royal sex scandal. Ian Lee has the biggest international events of the year. American forces dealt a major blow to ISIS in Syria. The group's leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, killed himself when U.S. special forces raided his compound. The operation was moved up after President Trump initially ordered troops home from Syria, but then backtracked, leaving roughly 500 to protect the country's oil. The president made denuclearization of North Korea a top priority, but not even multiple summits, including crossing into North Korea, could charm the supreme leader into ending his nuclear weapons program. Tensions rose in the Persian Gulf, with the U.S. blaming Iran for attacking four ships and two Saudi oil refineries. Widespread protests rocked the country, partially as a result from stinging U.S. sanctions. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's days in office may be numbered after prosecutors indicted him for bribery, fraud and breach of trust. Hong Kong also saw political turmoil after an extradition bill sparked months of violent unrest and calls for democratic reforms. Suicide bombers in Sri Lanka targeted churches and hotels and coordinated Easter Sunday attacks, killing more than 250 people. A convicted terrorist on early prison release went on a stabbing spree near London Bridge, killing two people. Bystanders tackled him to the ground before British police shot and killed him. A white supremacist opened fire at two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand, killing 51 people in the nation's deadliest attack that led to an overhaul of the country's gun laws. A volcano suddenly exploded on a popular tourist island in New Zealand, killing at least 18 people, including an American family. A fire tore through Notre Dame in Paris, destroying part of the famous cathedral. Donors pledged more than a billion dollars to restore the landmark. Floodwaters swamped the historic Italian city of Venice, beaching gondolas and trashing hotels. The mayor blamed climate change for the highest tide in 50 years. How dare you! Climate activist Greta Thunberg chastised world leaders at the United Nations for not doing enough to stop climate change, inspiring millions around the world to stage protests. British authorities dragged WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange from Ecuador's embassy in London, where he was holed up for seven years. The whistleblower is facing possible extradition to the U.S. for publishing thousands of classified government documents. To get Brexit done. A landslide election victory for British Prime Minister Boris Johnson broke years of Brexit deadlock in Parliament. But at the time, I felt it was the, it was the honourable and right thing to do. Britain's royal family did damage control after Prince Andrew talked publicly about his ties to convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. Congratulations. Thank you. And Prince Harry and Meghan brought some joy to the royals when they welcomed their first child into the world. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Little seven-month-old Archie is spending this ongoing holiday week with his mom and dad in the U.S. this year with his grandmother in Los Angeles. Coming up tomorrow morning, we'll continue, continue to look back at the year that was, going through the top entertainment stories of 2019. Time now, 721. We now head to Pasadena, where the Wisconsin Badgers are looking to have some duck for dinner on Wednesday when they take on Oregon in the Rose Bowl. But before that, they'll have some beef. Let us explain. The annual Lowry's Beef Bowl pits the Wisconsin offensive line against Oregon to see who could eat the most beef. That happened overnight. Offensive lineman David Mormon got to spin the first salad. He was injured against Minnesota and in the Big Ten title game, so he's having a double dose of fun this week. Actually, I grew up going to Chicago with my family on vacation. I would go to the Lowry's in Chicago. And so this is like one of my favorite restaurants in the world. So being able to go and kind of do something like that, it's been, a, it's been really cool. It's a really cool experience. Man, I'm pumped. It's a... Uh, it was definitely a hard couple weeks, you know, you want to be out there playing with the guys, but, um, you know, I'm feeling great and I'm excited to get out there. And uh, one last game was a Badger, so I'm so honored and blessed to do it here and get like the Rose Bowl. And I just can't wait to go out there and play with the guys one last time. The Badgers are still happy to have him. Linebacker Chris Orr got to make the first cut of prime rib. He's a Texas guy who says he prefers ribeye, but this is good too, and he's keeping the chef's coat and hat. I'm going to wear this in my kitchen every time I cook. Um, and if I make something for anybody, uh, make something for my parents, my brothers, or my fiance, if they say anything, I'll just ask them where their outfit is. And then how to handle the debate. I'm official now. 
He is official now. We will have team coverage ahead of the Rose Bowl all week long. Our Kevin Lewis, Melissa Kim, and Eric Franke will be covering the team and talking to fans ahead of the big matchup between the Oregon Ducks and Wisconsin Badgers on New Year's Day. Time now, almost 7.23. There's a half hour of news still ahead here on News 3 Now this morning Sunday. Next, we're running through the day's top stories, plus a lesson in loss and what it means to really live. This time of year is filled with celebrations, but for those of us navigating and dealing with grief, it can be very difficult. Our Leah Lynchai shares a very personal story about her brother, Levi, when we come back. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Happy Sunday, everyone. Thank you so much for spending your morning with us. It's December 29th. I'm Christina Laurie. We'll get a check on weather with Chris in just a second. But first, here are a few things to know as you start your day. The medical examiner has released the names of the people killed in a Christmas night car crash near Janesville. 19-year-old Emmanuel Jones and 20-year-old Quentin Castillo were killed late Wednesday night in a crash on West Rockport Road in the town of Janesville. Police believe they swerved to avoid hitting another car and they hit a tree. They were headed back to work after a break. The crash is still under investigation. The Packers are playing for their shot at becoming the number one seed in the NFC as they head to Detroit today for their last game of the regular season. The Packers are sitting pretty at 12 and 3 and with their most recent win in Minnesota on Monday night, they clinched the NFC North for the very first time since 2016. It's also a big game for running back Aaron Jones, who is just 16 yards away from 1,000 rushing yards this season. Kickoff against the Lions is at noon. 
And looking ahead, you'll want to avoid the malls this Thursday if you don't like crowds. Several shipping companies have dubbed January 2nd National Returns Day. UPS expects a record 1.9 million packages to be returned this Thursday. That's a 26% increase from last year. Stores are expected to be busy as well. Most stores will give you at least 30 days from the date of purchase to take items back, but a number of retailers are expanding those periods for the holidays to spread out crowds. Now let's check in with Chris to see our Sunday forecast. Hi, Chris. Hello, Christina. We had a lot of dense fog overnight. The good news is that a lot of that has started to erode away. Visibility now up to 10 miles throughout most of southern Wisconsin, but there are still some spots with some fog. Quarter mile visibility as you work your way towards the Dells. We get towards the lakeshore. Visibility down to a half a mile as we see some more of that moisture come in off of Lake Michigan. But the reality is right now in terms of what's falling out of the sky, things are dry for us. You saw the huge slug of moisture work its way on through. That's pushing on towards the north and east and we stay somewhat dry for most of the afternoon. I still think we're going to stay damp. I think we're going to see some drizzle and isolated instances of fog at times. Temperatures though will warm up 52 right now. Jane's Hill at 55. We're seeing most of these temperatures working their way into the low and mid 50s. We continue to increase from there. In fact, as we look ahead, watch how temperatures go up a degree or two about every hour, but we will keep the clouds around as we go through today. Although if we're lucky, we might be able to see a ray of sunshine or two. Once we look ahead, though, uh, things do begin to change. After 56 this afternoon, temperatures begin to drop, and they will drop enough for things to transition over to a period of snow. Winter storm watches throughout central and northern Wisconsin. Winter weather advisories for southwestern Wisconsin, and I suspect we may see some winter weather advisories for southeastern Wisconsin by the time we get you towards this afternoon. I'll break down why at about 745. Thank you so much, Chris. The holidays are supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, but for anyone dealing with loss, this month can be anything but that. There's this expectation it is supposed to be the happiest, most memorable time. And many people find themselves at some point in their lifetime where they just aren't merry. Our Leah Lynchide knows that all too well. After her losing her 24-year-old brother in a cr car crash this fall, if you're missing someone this month or someone you love is struggling with a loss, Leah shares her thoughts on working through those emotions in a letter to Levi. Dear Levi, I miss you. I don't get to tell you that very much these days. Every morning I wake up, I put on a smile and I deliver the news. I don't get to talk about you or about my broken heart. Sometimes I'm ashamed to say, I pretend I never lost you, just so I can get through the day. But we did lose you. We were devastated when the sheriff told us about your car crash, and when mom and dad had to bury their only son. Two months later, as we approach our first Christmas without you, your absence seems to be growing louder. This is how I will navigate my grief without you this December. The experts say I have to acknowledge my loss. I can't just sweep it under the rug. So I will talk about our memories and about how much I miss you during our annual holiday traditions. Like when we pick out our Christmas tree. Every year we'd go with mom and dad. Look how thick it is, you can't even see in the middle of oh it. Oh my goodness. You always had the honor of cutting it down. Who brought the saw? Nobody brought the saw. What did you do with the saw? Do you remember that one year you picked a tree with a crooked trunk? None of us noticed until it fell over in the living room. I love that memory. This season, I will also reach out for support because I know we're not alone in missing you. We are blessed to have a big family who will take care of us, who misses you too. And lately you've made that family a little bigger. People have come from all over Southwest Wisconsin to tell us about how you changed their life. In the gym. I remember the first time we ever met. As a personal trainer. And I had her do, I think it was two or three burpees. Shop carry. And out of the gym too. They've shared their memories 
and warmed our hearts. One, two, three, see I know this big extended family will keep your memory alive. That's how they'll find healing as well. They even came up with the saying, because that's what you taught all of us to do. That's what I will try to do this Christmas. Find meaning in our loss. I know there is some good we can still do because of what we've been through. I will find healing in living like you. I have always been so proud of you, my little brother. And all of your accomplishments. Jump. I'm still proud of you. I hope you know that. I will continue to wake up every morning missing you, especially this Christmas. Even though it hurts, I will still smile through our newscast. I will go home to Highland for the holidays to hold our parents without you. We won't ever forget you. We won't stop talking about you. And you will always inspire us to live like Levi. Love, your big sister. Know that, you know, it will get better. This was a story Leah wanted to share to let you all know you are not alone. If you or someone you know is navigating grief, we have some suggestions on how you can support them this holiday season, along with a full interview on the topic with UW health psychologist Shyla Mergain. Those are up right now on channel3000.com. Many people here in Madison are grieving this weekend as we're now learning two of the passengers involved in a deadly Hawaiian helicopter crash were a mother and daughter from our very own community. 47-year-old Amy Gannon and her 13-year-old daughter were two of the seven people lost in Friday's crash near the Nepali coast. Hawaiian officials say the safari helicopter went down during strong winds and storms. Gannon was the co-founder of Doyen, a Madison group aimed at empowering female entrepreneurs. When she talked to you, when she worked with you, she made you feel like you were the only person that existed at that time. And her sole purpose was to uh, help you be, help you achieve everything that you ever wanted to do. And it's personalities like that that are really hard to be able to replace. And uh, we've really lost a huge asset in the community. Gannon is survived by her husband and 16-year-old son. Gannon's daughter, Jocelyn, was an eighth grade student at Hamilton Middle School. The school sent this letter to families this weekend, saying in part, as individuals, we all have our own ways of coping with bereavement. And for many of our students, this could likely be their first experience with this type of loss. Please talk with your child about Jocelyn's passing and seek appropriate help if needed. Emotional support will be made available to students and staff in the school library starting tomorrow morning. Time now, 7.35, taking a turn from chips and dip to pizza and burgers. You can't fully enjoy a football game without some really good food. And we're getting you bowl game ready with the folks from Boston's restaurant in Wanakee. They'll share how to build the perfect spread right after this.
Welcome back everyone. It's the season of snacking and with the Rose Bowl happening just a few days from now, we are building the perfect pizza spread this morning. We're gonna throw a little pizza party. Um, the folks from Boston's restaurant are here. So I'm gonna let you guys introduce yourselves. You are the general man, you're one of the co-owners. Right, excuse me. Right, mm -hmm. yep, my name's Kelsey Kinzel and I'm a, one of the franchise owners with my husband, Derek. And Danielle, yep. your role? Yep, I'm the assistant general manager. Well, thank you so much for being here this morning Thanks with us. Thanks for having so Kelsey, us. I wanted yeah. to start with you. Mm -hmm. So you are, a, you have a long history in the hospitality industry, but you recently opened up Boston's we here did. in mm -hmm. Wanakee. Yeah. Why did you want to get involved? Um, we love the Boston's concept. It's a family-friendly restaurant, um, sports bar and dining um, under one roof. Um, we have over 30 televisions, including a 155-inch video wall. So it's a great venue for sports. And like I said, uh, family-friendly. So we like to bring in the moms, dads, and kiddos. Um, great place to watch sports with the friends. Um, we've got a wide menu all offering more than just pizza. We have over 80 menu items. It's gourmet pizza, pasta, salad, ribs, wings, some of the stuff we're gonna show you here today. Um, we're gonna have Danny build us one of our popular uh, pizzas. It's a Sicilian, so. Mm -hmm. Because it's a great place to not only watch the game, but you can order out as well. So mm -hmm. we wanna build one of the pizzas mm -hmm. that people can order. And you can also make this at home, get some ideas mm -hmm. with what Danielle's doing, so. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna build the Sicilian pizza here. Okay. We're gonna start with our cheese. We've already got the sauce. It's our secret sauce. Okay. It's been in our company for over 50 years. Okay, so I'm guessing you're not gonna give us nope, any don't hint ask. at what's we will <laughs> not. We will not let you know. Okay. <laughs> so we're doing a bunch of cheese here. We, we live in Wisconsin, you know, we like to okay. keep it cheesy. <laughs> yes. So after the cheese, we're gonna move over to the pepperonis. Okay. And what we do in our restaurant is we have all fresh ingredients, never frozen. So we like to take pride in that. So these are prepared in-house every day. Okay, so even if people are starting their New Year's resolutions, you can feel a little good that you at least You can feel a little good. These are fresh, never frozen. So, okay. I mean, if that <laughs> we'll makes you it. feel better. It does. Thanks <laughs> for asking. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so after we do our pepperonis, we're gonna move on to the ham. Okay. And another thing that we like to pride ourselves in is that there's a bite in every bite. So that's something that Boston's, um, it's a reason that it makes our pizzas gourmet. So like I said, we're gonna do our ham. Okay, we're explain a little bit about what the bite in a bite means. Yes, yeah, so there's a bite in every bite. So we use our fresh ingredients and we wanna make sure that you guys eating the pizzas are getting the full experience. So there's gonna be a bite in every bite. When you take a bite, there's gonna be a part each recipe or each ingredient will be in there. Our dough is also made fresh daily yes, it and is. it's a proof process of 24 hours. So um, that's where the experience begins with our our dough, mm -hmm. which is also a secret <laughs> recipe. So yes. We only have about 30 seconds left. So I'm gonna let you continue building this mm -hmm. pizza. Yep. But I also wanted to give folks at home an idea if they're trying to come up with their own spread. Do you have any unique topping ideas that people should try out? Um, well, all of our gourmet pizzas, as Danny said, we have over um, 30, 30 different fresh items you can use. But um, mm -hmm. as far as bringing it home for a Super Bowl or Rose Bowl coming up, um, the game, the team platter here is an excellent opportunity to kind of taste a lot of different things. There's the pretzel twists, there's the cactus cuts, our wings, mm -hmm. um, pizzas on there. Mm -hmm. um, as far as your pizza it's you can create your own you can do barbecued chicken you can do a um, whatever you'd like whatever yeah. meets your fancy we do uh, takeout and uh, we have partnered with Grubhub for delivery as well, so that's an option, and we will cater events in-house or take it, bring it to you. So, so whether you dine in, you order out, build it at home, there are so many different ways that you can enjoy pizza. We just wanna quickly show the final products. We're out of time. Um, that's the Sicilian pizza mm -hmm. that we're yep. building. We Magic Here of TV, is. So that's yes. what it'll look like. Uh -huh. Super fast yeah. oven. Yeah, Thanks thank so you much so for much having for us. coming in. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> And a wet, windy, warm Sunday ahead for us here in Wisconsin, but none of those three things will last for very long. Chris is tracking our next chances for snow and sinking temperatures in your full first alert forecast. That's next. But first, if you have a little kid turning three years old soon, please let us know so we can show their picture right here on our show.
Well, overnight, we heard the rumbles of thunder, we had the rounds of rain, we had the wind gusts, but today things will be a little bit more quiet for us. We're going to see a dry slot this afternoon, though we can't rule out some fog, but then the heavy rain makes a comeback overnight, and then that changes to light snow as we head into your Monday. Let's talk about the setup right now. Here's our area of low pressure just towards our north and west. We have a cold front towards the south, a warm front towards the north, and let me explain why we're going to be quiet this afternoon. Storm systems all have what we call conveyor belts per se. That warm conveyor belt is what keeps us warm and moist just ahead of the low. You have the cold conveyor belt towards the north and west. This is why we're seeing snow there. But then you have the dry conveyor belt towards the southwest, and that wraps in drier air to our storm system. And folks, that is exactly where we are right now. That's where we'll continue to stand as we go through the day. So high resolution Doppler is giving us a fairly clean sweep. However, there may still be some low level moisture that's not picked up on radar. You're going to see that drizzle, the low clouds as we hang on through this morning. Temperature wise, though, we are certainly warm. 52 degrees right now in Madison. Janesville at 55. Boscobel also hanging out with double nickels. Watch what happens as we go through time. These temperatures begin to warm up. I'm stopping the clock at 2 o'clock. We'll see those temperatures right around 56 at that time. I also can't rule out perhaps a few peaks of some sunshine, but by midnight we start to see that rain moving in from the east and then that colder air comes in. Snow showers and flurries, those will be possible by the time we get you towards Monday morning. By Monday afternoon, I think it is steady light snow that'll continue through Monday night into your Tuesday morning as well and that will likely be some accumulating snow perhaps on the order of an inch or two it is with this reason that we do have the winter weather advisories for the western portions of the viewing area I suspect these will be expanded east through time but then northern Wisconsin is under a winter storm watch and I believe that that may become a winter storm warning so folks if you're traveling today no issues other than the fog and the low clouds but by tomorrow and then into Tuesday, it's going to be the snow covered roads and slick spots that you'll want to be mindful of. Watch what happens through the pattern as we go through the rest of the week. By the time we get you towards Thursday and Friday, we're in a pattern that sends storm systems out of the south. Those could be a little bit stronger. As we go through time, though, by next weekend, we start to see a pattern that could send us more light snow events from the north, and our models are picking up on that pattern as well. Watch this. This is Thursday. Notice how it sends that storm system out of the south. By the time we get you towards the 4th of January, we see a light snow event coming out of the north, and that could happen again as we get into the second week of January. I wouldn't take any of those verbatim, but nonetheless, that is exactly what we're paying very close attention to. We have those snow chances on the map for Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, along with the snow chance for Monday. But this afternoon directly will be relatively quiet before more heavy rain arrives tonight. You know how I feel about snow, Chris. Don't love it. I do know how you feel, but we'll get through this. It's just the winter, Christina. If you say so. <laughs> All well, right. Bye, Chris. There's more news all day long here on News 3 Now. And then tomorrow morning, we are taking a look back at the year that was, sharing the top entertainment stories of 2019. But first, what happens when you mix Alice in Wonderland with Peter Pan? You get Alice in Panto Land, of course. We're heading behind the scenes of the latest local production, which we're told is for immature audiences only. We'll be right back.
Finally this morning, what do you get when you mix Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan together? You get Alice in Pantoland. The Mercury Players production says it's for immature audiences only. Parental discretion discouraged. Let's head backstage with Michael Bruno. A very merry on birthday to me. To who? To me. Oh, you! Well, what is a panto? A panto, yes. Um, a lot of people are confused. They think it's a Marcel Marceau routine. That's a pantomime. Oh. Look, a tea party. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alice, and you must be the Mad Hatter in the March Hare the Cheshire Cat told me about. This is a, a tradition in the British Isles uh, that has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's actually older than Shakespeare. Who's this? Oh, this is our friend, the Dormouse. Introduce yourself. Sweet. But she's very shy. <laughs> it has to be a story that everybody knows um, so that it, it can appeal to kids through the adults. It's very nice to meet you all. No room, no room. What? There's plenty of room. Don't you know it's rude to sit down without an invitation? Mm. So it has to have a recognizable plot and characters. Um, it has to have good guys and bad guys. What is this? Your invitation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it has to have at least one major female character. Uh, first thing you should do when you sit down is say, how do you do? Oh, well, how do you do? How do I do what? Yes, how does he do what? I mean, are you all right? <laughs> no, half of me is left. It's the fantasy of uh, a seven-year-old girl. I mean, that's, you know, that's the best way to describe it. It's, uh, it's her little world that she, uh, you know, enters and, uh, and has an adventure in. And it has to have silly songs and parodies, and it has to have timely political humor for the adults, um, some slapstick humor for the kids. Uh, basically, it's something that will appeal to all ages at one point or another in the show. I did enjoy your singing. <laughs> You enjoyed our singing? What a delightful child. We never get compliments. <laughs> so the story follows this girl, Alice, um, who sees a rabbit while she's with her sister who has a clock, um, which is sort of unusual. And so she follows the rabbit through this hole in the ground, um, which leads her to this magical land, which we call Pantoland. Later, they're going to turn me into rabbit stew. Oh. Rabbit stewly. Well, it's no re wonder you're late. This watch is exactly two days slow. Two days slow now? Oh, that can't be right. So we'll have to look into this. Mm. <laughs> Oh, yes, it's clearly broken. Indeed, there are pieces all over the place. It's ruined. I'll never tell time again. Well, Mr. Rabbit, what about the giant clock around your neck? Oh, this one is purely for decoration. <laughs> flavor, flavor. Uh, not to worry. We can fix this. Uh, scalpel. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Crikey. <laughs> uh, butter. Butter. How is that? To help. Not to worry, this is the best butter bought by Betty Butter, who bought a bit of better butter. Be careful, it's a delicate instrument. There's a small margin of error. So, here, all better. Or at least all butter. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. It's ruined, and I'm late for a very important date. No time to say hello. Goodbye, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. <laughs> You have one more chance to see Alice in Pantoland in person. That's today at 2 o'clock. Tickets are available at bartelltheater.org. And immature audiences only. Do you qualify? I qualify. I think so. <laughs> I was like, I'm who, more than who qualified. Who are we pretending? I know. All right, here's how things are going to shape up weather-wise. Folks, we'll see some drizzle around at times today, but for the most part, today will be drier than yesterday until we get you towards tonight. Once we get towards tonight, heavy rain wraps back in. That turns over to snow and accumulating snow for Monday night into your Tuesday. Then our pattern is one that's colder. Hey, maybe Reggie and Verona will actually be able to recreate that picture. Hey, Reggie looks like weeks. he likes snow. He must <laughs> we'll be a Chris, <laughs> not a Christina. Have a great day, everyone.